Hi, sweeties. How are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim. If this is your first time of coming across this channel, sweetheart, kindly smash the subscribe button, turn on the notification. So again, notify each time I upload and please give this video a thumb up. I appreciate you all so much. And I want to say a very big shout out to every one of you for all the support, all the love you all give me here. I am truly grateful. I appreciate every one of you. You are super awesome. Thank you. So today we'll be talking about uh, something that I found so interesting. And I was like, yo, I am definitely bringing this here because it's been black people screaming, it's been black people shouting, and uh, to them, black people are loud, to them, black people talk a lot, to them, black people are this, that, right? And it's actually about a white woman. She is asking, why did we not listen to black women? Why didn't we listen to them? Oh, it's now done on them that they were not being loud. They were not complaining so much, right? And she went further to explain that uh, genocide had, ha has happened to black women and also indigenous women, right? Stay with the screen. Let me roll this clip because I personally cannot wait. So you all will hear what she got to say. Then we'll come back to talk about it. And I absolutely want to read all your comments. Let me know what you all think in the comment section. And we'll go straight to roll the stitches because the stitches are so hmm, well loaded. So straight up, let me roll that. I have a controversial rant and please don't chase me off the platform for it. But seriously, why didn't we listen to black women? Why did we not listen to them? I'm watching all these emergent, you know, fascist bills that are being passed that target trans kids. And I'm hearing in my comment section a lot, this is Gilead, this is like the Handmaid's Tale. But as I look through the history of the United States, genocide is nothing new in this country. It's not confined to some fictional book. It actually happened to indigenous women and to black women. And this isn't some ancient history. Before the Indian Child Welfare Act, which is going to SCOTUS to possibly be overturned soon, before that, one third of all Native children were forcibly removed from their homes. So when we talk about DeSantis passing this bill that's going to forcibly remove children that are trans or have trans parents, I mean, Natives already went through this. And how many Black mothers have we seen that have lost their babies and no justice comes to them? And I've marched in BLM marches. I felt like I was listening, but I wasn't. Giving some vocal support online or, you know, buying a pen or something or even just showing up in marches, like, it wasn't enough. And to tie this back into what's going on with the LGBT community, well, we wouldn't even have a pride if it wasn't for Black trans women. I just feel like the Black community, they have tried to warn all of us, all of us white liberals, for a long time that if we don't stand and fight for them, that we would be on the chopping block next. And as I'm making all these videos exposing groups like the Council for National Policy and everything, I am feeling disgusted with myself because I'm doing it because my son is trans. My son is affected. I am a lesbian. I am affected. But the truth is, I should have been doing this kind of passionate work for a lot longer. I'm 35. This should have been happening a lot longer. And it should have been focused on Black and Indigenous people who have been through this type of oppression since the foundation of the country. I can't change the past, but what I can say is that we all need to really, really listen to the communities that have lived through this, that have survived this in the past. I think we need to stop using The Handmaid's Tale as an example for what's happening when there are real people who lived through it. We need to center their history, their fight, because I truly believe that one of the reasons that we're in this situation that we are now with the rise of fascism is because we did not do enough to help the BIPOC community, to listen to the BIPOC community who's been screaming about fascism for decades. All right, so before we get into the stitches, I have something that I want to say. I do not have anything against anybody, I mean, anybody's sex or something. But I am like, what I want, I want to say is that, so she is now, because she is affected, right? 
That's why she felt the importance of black people. What if she is not affected? Would she come out to say the same thing? Would she come out to recognize that they don't know the history or they don't understand black American or black people's or jail and all that? Because I feel like it's a, it's a selfish something like, you know, she is being selfish. Like, do not get me wrong. It is because she is already being affected. Black people have been fighting for everything, whether they are affected or not. They always speak out. But she is speaking out because she is affected. You know what? Say so go to the screen. Let me roll the stitches. Then we'll come back to talk about it because the stitches are the most important ones. So let's get into it. Why didn't we listen to black women? Why did we not listen to them? It's actually no shade to her because I think I follow her and I've learned some things. But this is like Cinderella finding out that her stepsisters is mean. Girl, they are mean to you too. Your sisters is racist. Your sisters used to own people. And not because their husbands told them to, okay? That is one of the most pervasive lies of patriarchy and racism together. You didn't need black women to tell you that one. You can look around. Look around, look around. You have eyes, you have perception. You can see it yourself. You a tree, you can move. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Oh, that was such a funny time on here. And forget the awareness. We've passed awareness. What are y'all finna do about it now? What are y'all finna do about it now that you are uncomfortable? Will your discomfort spur you to action or spur you to fear? That's the part I want to talk about. Why didn't we listen to black women? Because you value your whiteness and privilege over everything. Because when you agree to become white, you forfeit your heritage, your culture, and therefore a semblance of community and sisterhood. You don't know how to listen to anybody other than white men. Because in order to listen to someone, you have to shut all the way the fuck up. And that's something that y'all don't like doing. Because ultimately, y'all don't want freedom. You want the freedom to oppress other people like white men have oppressed people. Because y'all are lazy and don't want to put in the real work it would take to actually gain liberation for all people. Because of your internalized fear and jealousy. Your dedication to mediocrity. Because of your allegiance to white supremacy, capitalism, and massage noir. Your internalized self-hatred. But seriously... Why didn't we listen to black women? Why She's asking why we didn't listen to black women now that we're seeing all the anti-LGBT legislation going through. And the why we didn't listen to black women sentiment is something that's been floating around for seven years and it hasn't changed anything. And I've seen a lot of response videos, not necessarily flaming her, but flaming the sentiment. But here's the thing. Human nature is inherently selfish we get to a point where we are comfortable with where we are and then we stop and that's not me excusing it but black women have always been the canary in the coal mine from medicine to technology there's been a lot that's been trampled on the blood sweat tears and bones of black women so Something that benefits us tends to benefit everybody because we don't get a lot of benefits a lot of the time. And we see it in other places in society, right? We see it with celebrities. When celebrities suddenly get sick, then all of a sudden they're these major activists for their illnesses, where prior to them getting those illnesses, it was radio silent. So yes, listen to black women, but ultimately, I think it's more about, less about listening to a specific demographic and more about stepping away from comfort as the indicator of how far your activism should go. Once you've reached your pinnacle is not the time to stop moving the needle forward. That was long. I don't know if it made sense, but yeah. Why didn't we listen to black women? Why did we not listen? So are these questions helpful? That's what I want to ask back because I find them quite irritating and please stay with me so I can explain why. 
In the year 2023, if we have learned nothing, we have got to have at least understand that someone's identities do not indicate their political affiliation, their socioeconomic positionality in society, nor their intellectual capacity to understand what the hell's going on all the time. So we cannot reduce people down to their identity markers that we are all conditioned to perform in said society and then somehow think that is going to give us a template for freedom making and liberation. So for me, the better question is, where is your attachment to the structure that did not allow you to see what it actually was until right now, if you really actually see it at all still? That's an honest question. That's a self-reflective question. And it's a question that will actually have you doing work instead of putting the responsibility once again on an external being that you have anthropomorphized as a black woman. And see, when you want, and not just, I'm not talking to the creator. I'm, this, is a, this is a reflective view. It's a reflective we. When we want to reskirt responsibility, we always love to then put it onto another group. This is a way that we have been conditioned to kind of reproduce this extractive racial capitalistic way of relationships, right? Because the economic system we live in in the U.S. has infiltrated all aspects and all institutions, especially the home via the family, right? And in these kind of third spaces like the church. So you have to be able to see that the way that the structure has maintained itself over space and time is that it has gotten itself embedded in every aspect of our lives. So when you want to externalize the work, you are helping the power structure maintain because you are taking no responsibility. And what does that ideologically? White Christian nationalism. Everything's external. Give it up to a Jesus or give it up to a God somewhere else, but never actually sit and take the responsibility and do the internal work to root it out so that you can actually walk forward with some damn confidence. So I want us to not do this reduction. And I know this is going to piss off some of you, especially some black women. But I am saying this because you, all of us are attached to this system. All of us have the responsibility to root the colonizer out from us. So you cannot put this on somebody else or some other system and somehow think you will see a promised land. Because until you actually want to do that internal work, until you want to root that motherfucking colonizer out, he will keep showing up over and over and over again. And we're seeing it in these goddamn podcast areas. We're seeing it in this transphobic shit that's coming out. So stop putting it on somebody else and do the entire... Why didn't we listen to black women? Why did we not listen to them? It's because it didn't affect y'all until now and the white women before you didn't give a shit because they still thought that people, women who look like me, um, were still beneath them so as long as they were okay if they're above the water everybody else whatever happens underneath doesn't really matter because they can just shut the door on it and they don't have to see they don't have to look they don't have to you know they can stay over here where they're comfortable and not have to worry about us who have been drowning the entire time and are just like hey <laughs> we've been working and doing everything for you guys like literally since you brought us here and we've been raising your children and wiping your asses and working like since before women had the women at large had the option to leave the home and do anything else like we were we've been we've been here the entire time and we've been trying to tell you guys for decades like hey this shit is not right this isn't go none of this is going to ever work out unless all of us have the exact same opportunities and um they didn't didn't want to listen you know as long as y'all were comfortable it didn't matter and now that they're coming for your rights now and now that they're on y'all's necks, now suddenly it's a fire. Oh my God, now it's an emergency. It wasn't an emergency before, but now it is. Because now it's an emergency for you, guys. Like, directly. So, that's why. Sorry, um, that's the truth. But hopefully we can do something radically different and not center like the teeniest, tiniest subset of people, white men, and, you know, expect though that the what they want to work for everybody so let's stop centering them and center or at least it doesn't even have to be like at the center like for now like yeah center black women center brown women fans listen to us because i don't know if, if nothing else let's try something different let's try listening to other people for once and see where that gets us because focusing on the tiny little little subset has got us here so 
in the interest of not repeating history, let's do something different, right? Yeah, listen to us when we say, hey, this isn't right. This smells like shit because it is shit. And you guys didn't want to look at it until it was literally like on your plate. And now you're like, oh my God, this is shit on my plate. And we were like, yeah, that's what they've been cooking the entire time and telling us that it's like, like cake or something. <laughs> like what? <laughs> oh, it's not funny, but it kind of is. Um, but now is not the time to point and laugh and say, ha ha, you know, it's time to say, yeah, yeah, we've been here the entire time. Shut the fuck up and get behind us because we've been here the entire time. We know what the fuck is up and we have ideas because we've been watching the patterns the entire time. So thanks for waking up and keep centering black women. So I, <clears throat> let me start by saying that I really appreciate everybody that stitched to the video. They all came like, you know, they came through. I absolutely love what they say. And like, I, I don't want to be angry, like, you know, because I feel like when it is not affecting you, it is not a problem. But when it is affecting you, that is when you remember that it's a problem. She came out because the problem is right on her and maybe people around her and then she remember that black people or black women have been screaming this all this while and all that you know what do not put it on black people or do not push it anyway get back to work if you want to work work for yourself and work your way through all right so this is all i got to say i absolutely want to read all your comments let me know what you all think in the comment section and thank you all so much for all your support see you all in my next video bye for now